Alright, hello all you crazy people out there, my name is Dragonite, and welcome back to Harvest December. Mizuho looked back several times before she felt safe enough to speak. Do you think they're managing? We all were tense, traveling in silence, our sense of danger heightened. It felt a long while before I sensed I heard anybody's voice. Once we were out of town, we moved towards the beach to walk through the windbreak forests. The trees provided us some shelter from the rain, making it much easier to move. I wouldn't get my hopes up too high if I were you. The mummy replied as she stared towards the direction of the mountain. I think so too. From what we've dealt with so far, I doubt that they will be able to handle them if they attacked in numbers. So far, our patterns haven't faded yet. We were all, th we all thought the same thing. We had to hurry. Again, we moved in silence, picking up our pace. Kayohara led the way, choosing the fastest, easiest path we could move in, which I was grateful for. I would have thought this area would be well guarded. Miyori whispered from behind. She was right. Ever since we collected the device, we had stolen through the forest, but we still still we had yet to meet a single person. Maybe the god isn't the type to take precautions for protecting and defending. Or, he's absolutely confident Megara can handle everything. We're here. Kiyohara stopped. Before us, there was a gentle slope leading to, down towards the beach. Alright, Yuki and I will go first. We'll follow soon after. We'll hide if we think Megara will find us. Right. Better get rid of the Kagami crystals while she's not there. I personally think that we will be that it will be harder for you to lure her out of the cave. I'll do my best. That's all I can promise. You sound like you don't have confidence. You're talented in tricking girls. Don't worry. You must make you must you make me wonder about your opinion of me. Do you want to know? No thanks. No need to go in denial. Kohai muttered. Well later then. See ya. We parted. The stormy sea was colored so dark it was almost black. It looked like it could swallow us up. This isn't quite the pretty view for a date. This isn't the time to joke about things like that. No, on the contrary, this is exactly the time I need to talk to you. Yuki huddled close to me. I could feel her warmth through our clo cold, soaked clothes. The, wi the high waves rose up and crashed around us. This was where we had played beach volleyball. When I spoke to Yuki, then Megari. This felt like so long ago. When I was alone with Yuki, it always seemed awkward, like an awkward situation. In December, we almost we escaped a snowy mountain, almost losing our lives. In March, we fought a lot. We seldom had good times, but for some reason, we were still together. I think that's more of Yuki's fault than yours, honestly. Remember soccer reviewing? In April? You went with Al to see the cherry blossoms. I kept silent, trying to read her expression. She shook her head. It was a coincidence. I saw you two sidetracked, so I followed. You spied on us. You're going away with a different woman. And... And... You kissed. I stiffened. I saw everything right before me. I didn't know how to react. Wow. Survived. I was speaking to myself. I ran. I felt her grasp my hand, tightening her grip. I couldn't intrude, because I knew I didn't belong there. You're talking about belonging. Am I with you, Misaki? She stared at me, pleading. Am I? This wasn't the right time, a voice whispered in my head. There were people in, the, in pain around us and we had a job to do to fix things. This conversation had nothing to do with that. Yet, here we were, trying to find a common ground. Where were we now? Then I realized something. This is what Megari felt. This was her power, but there was nothing direct to it. Nothing to direct it to. Like wandering in, de in a desert. Glipsies. I'm afraid to be alone. I held her hand back. I was always afraid. I was afraid because I knew, even if I tried to shelter myself, protect myself, the only thing that I brought was self-destruction. I was afraid of, of the future I was building, but things were slowly changing now. It wasn't Yuki that needed me. It was I that needed her. It's time. We stepped out off the sand onto solid rock. Promise me you'll answer me later. I promise. It was time for us to fight. We let go of each other and made our way into Megara's cave. Huh? So much for our resolve, we let out a cry of surprise as we stood before the Kagami crystals. They covered the entire cave from bottom to top. There would be many, there would be many more hidden under the surface. The amount of Kagami crystals in the cave would be a thousand times over what Ru the Rokushiki Shrine had. As expected, it was enough to act as a medium for the ritual of embodiment for the entire island. Megari! But our interest lay elsewhere. Megari was gone. Instead, you lay on the ground where Megari must have been. Oh, it's you. Those were her first words when she came around. She tried getting up, but groaned in pain and fell on her knees again. I tried to explain, but... This happened. 
It doesn't look like she's lost all of rational thought though, Yuki said as she checked Yu's wounds. It looks bad, but internal da internally there's not much damage. Your bones are fine. Take a rest and soon you'll be walking. Is... is that so? Did you manage to talk with her? No, I didn't manage anything. Hey, Kono-san. She hesitated and I almost encouraged her when she asked. How do I get her to listen? You'll have to strap her down and force her to. That sounds like a good idea, she smiled faintly. Where is Megari now? Why do you think I was left here? I took a deep breath. I see. I stood up. You aren't going to get angry. Do you like Megari, you? I told you, we aren't on a first name basis. You see, I'm rather fond of Megari myself. So you mean you're on the same side? You finally get that, huh? I hate you even more for it. Misaki? We'd better hurry. Yes, you should. Although I doubt you can stop her. But... Hmm? But if there is anybody that can stop her at all, I think it will be you guys. You better hurry too, you. I know. I pulled on Yuki's hand, taking her out of the cave. Where are we going? There's no time to explain. We'd better hurry. Combat creature. This has been like... Seven minutes or so, so I'm gonna keep reading. Like, my cutoff for video length is like eight minutes, seven and a half minutes. If it's shorter than that, I'll do another reading. If it's longer than that, I'll just end it off. So far, these last few chapters haven't been that long, but I don't know. There was still that one that was like 35, 40 minutes long without a break. I'm kind of paranoid now that other chapters are going to be doing that same thing. Anyway, I'm gonna take a break for water and then keep reading. Alright, anyway, Megari stepped on the device, crushing it under her feet. Oh, that's not good. We've been had. Mashira Tawada clutched her rod with a bitter smile on her face. The trees and wind blocked her view. The area was dark. The skies were thick and heavy with grey clouds. The wind deafened her ears. She could hear the, ground, the groans of the others that lay by her feet. But she had no time to stoop to see if they were okay. Even she herself was barely standing. They were losing. Ugh. Mizuha gritted her teeth, swallowing a cry. Sine was knocked out unconscious, unable to scream at all. Hit! Ashura concentrated on the movement before her. If she hadn't, she was sure Megara would melt into the shadows and she would lose her. She heard the device shatter in a high, brittle sound. I suppose your god could see right through our plan. We learned about it just now. I didn't think you could hold a conversation. You couldn't stop the Kagami crystals once I'd broken this, right? It wouldn't matter. We just have to defeat all the girls on the island. Yes, but that's your wishful thinking. The Rokushiki god burst out laughing in Megara's voice. Mashira was disgruntled with everything she saw. And you think it's alright hurting my people, do you? It w I was never alright. You're going to play dumb? It took effort for Mashira to pronounce each word she spoke. I don't care anymore. I am going to give up on everything now. Come on, get yourself together. The old woman there looks like she can give us some fun. Old woman, huh? I have, I have to show this god hell, Mashira swore to herself. But she's barely standing. That's right. All the reason more to... Mishira relaxed her body, concentrating on Megari. Finish her off. Megari was right beyond her. Her body was lax, drooping forward in a low crouch. Her face was covered in dark, shiny curls. Mishira lowered herself too, anticipating a tackle. She readied herself with a counterattack. She was wrong. Megari dropped even lower into a crawl. Hit! Mishira didn't ex understand the meaning of her stance. But she knew that if she used her rod to knock Megari back on the back of her head, she could finish her off. In an extreme situation, Mishira was the one to trust her instincts, not her logic. She stepped forward and stabbed her rod straight down before Megari could do anything. That can't be. Her rod hit the ground. Where was Megari? She looked down. Right under her feet, that's where she was. How is that even possible? Her mind went blank for a moment, unable to process the situation. This is bad, she thought. She couldn't afford to lose her concentration now, not during battle. She had been an idiot. She had to run, she had to escape, and her mind was just doing that to survive. Then she felt it. A slippery black substance crawled up her leg, wrapping itself around her. Soon, Megara's face was close before her. Ah, uh, She could feel Megara's breath on her eyeballs. That's kind of gross. Her face was covered in dirt, her, hat mat her hair matted and sticky, sectioning her face. She felt cool and clammy. She constricted Mashira, Mashira so she couldn't move a single finger. I have to run, Mashira thought repeatedly. Megara split her red lips to show a row of wide, pointed teeth. Pointed teeth, huh? Mashira shook her head in disbelief. I've got you now. 
Bashira heard herself screaming for the longest time she could remember. Nobody was left standing. Yuki stared at, the, at her broken mother, splayed out on the ground with her arms and legs bent in weird angles. She didn't lose herself, but kept her calm. She knew losing her temper would do her no good, but her eyes were on fire. Urgh. She did not rush to Mashiro, but steadily walked towards her and knelt by her side. To think, I would be seen like this by my daughter. Where is Megari? She's gone to the Rokushiki Shrine. Her god still wants entertainment. Mashiro spoke clearly. I couldn't imagine how much strength it took for her to speak with all her limbs broken. Yuki, you look ready. Your eyes are alive. If somebody can stop Megari, it would be somebody like you. I'll make her pay. I know. Now go. Do not waste your time speaking with the defeated. You have things to do. But I'll find help. Kohai staggered over. She didn't go too hard on us since she, we weren't much since we weren't much fun. Weren't worth much fun. He appeared to have just recovered. His eyes were still unfocused. Please do. Hurry. I will. Huh? Without leaving any time to protest, Yuki lifted me into her arms. Then she began to run. Well, that's amusing, Mashiro com commented with a faint smile. Kohai immediately began waking up the others. Can you put me down, I asked politely. This is faster. I couldn't hear her voice well. She wasn't going to put me down, so I simply hung on to her. The wind whistling in my ear as she ran off against it. In no time, we would reach the Rokushiki Shrine. That was interesting. I'm going to end this off here for real. My name is Dragonite. I hope you all enjoyed that, and I will see you all later.